This is Porsche's most aerodynamic car ever, the 911 GT3 RS. And just look at it. It has all these aero devices. This is what a car should be. What do each of them do though? To find out, we have this simulation of it traveling at 40 meters per second, which is about 144 kph. This center plane view shows that so much of the car is incredibly aerodynamic. Look at the flow just traveling along without much disturbance. We have an enlarged front lip compared to the regular 911, and that's great for producing low pressure underneath the car because the flow is forced to accelerate, and through the Venturi effect, the pressure then drops. But while this 911 version is sweet, it still needs work here because the front cooling flows are modeled, but we still get some separation over the lip. That's because, as you can see, some of the flow at the front is still forced down over the lip, and that 90 degree sharp angle is too much for it to stay attached. And while a little flow separation might not seem like a big deal, it introduces a lot of unsteadiness, and that then goes over the underbody and reduces how well it can work then. So there's a knock on effect. The hood of the car is good, but one really impressive thing is the junction between the hood and the windshield. If you've watched any of our other videos, you'll know that this region can cause quite a bit of recirculation and drag particularly when the hood angle is very different to the windshield angle, like we have here. But for the RS version, we don't get that recirculation. Sure, there's a little bit of flow deceleration, but that's it. That could be because of the vents at the top of the hood. There is now more air being added to the flow, and that helps reduce the separation here. The rest of the regular parts of the car are pretty good too. The underbody is nice, and the flow over the roof, well, that isn't so great, but that's normal for the Porsche design. It's the other bits that are way more interesting, for example, the rear wing. There is massive high pressure on top pushing it down, while the low pressure underneath sucks it down at the same time. But one really smart thing Porsche has done is raise the wing up so high. It not only gets into faster moving flow, but it also moves the low pressure region underneath the wing from the high pressure region over the charged cooling area. That way, these pressures remain separate and don't cancel each other out. Because of that, you get two downforce producing sections in the same region the wing itself, and the rear lip. The diffuser on this version isn't a normal one either. Massive guard vanes have been added, and I think they work pretty well. You can see just how much the flow shoots up at the back, a lot more than the regular 911 that we tested here. A really cool area of this car is the front wheels. Several large aero devices are seen. For example, the air curtain, the wheelhouse top vents, and the opening at the rear, bleeding air from inside the wheelhouses out. This plane slices straight through this area, and one impressive part is how the flow from the top fence in the front wheel houses generally flows towards the intake at the front of the rear wheels. So the lower energy flow is being captured, used, and hence the drag drops again. But to see just how effective these vents are at sucking air out of the wheel houses, these streamlines were placed right inside. And you can see that some do come out, but many still jump out of the top of the arch. The little at the rear of the front wheel is doing pretty well too from this perspective. The floor is straightened and pushed downstream in an effort to reduce the wheelhouse wake. The pressure is still low well downstream of the exit, which also helps suck out more of the wheelhouse flow instead of creating a blockage and making it burst out from around the wheel, which would then increase the drag too. These streamlines show that of the streamlines placed inside the wheelhouses, the ones that weren't channeled through this section still get sucked to the outside of the guide vane, and that is a major benefit because they aren't blowing out and creating more wake. And also, a sneaky thing Porsche did was this guide vane looks like it's open at the top, but in fact, there is actually a top to it, but it's hidden. Sneaky sneaky. From this top view slicing through the air curtain level, you can see that it is still doing a little bit, but not that much. The flow still bursts from out around the front wheel, and that's not too surprising because a while back when Porsche were developing their air curtains, I was talking with the head of their aerodynamics and he said that their air curtains are first of all, really hard to get right, and even small changes can negate their benefit. He seemed a little frustrated, like a father disappointed with his son. And secondly, their air curtains only reduce the drag by like three counts, so about 1%. So, to see how they kind of bleed some of the flow from around the front through to around the wheel, but also let some go through, and a large wake still forms, is not that surprising here. And these streamlines show just how little the flow around the front gets channeled through the air curtain, and subsequently how large the wake is around the front wheels. The one thing that isn't good is, Around the outside of the front wheels, you get low pressure zones, and that is going to suck more air out of the wheel houses and increase the wake size. This simulation was done with open foam. If you want to learn open foam yourself, then take our course here, and we also have a Christmas special on right now if you're interested. The rear wheel bleeds are cool too, and I think they are doing a bit here. Again, they're not completely capturing the flow, but they're doing a good job redirecting a lot of it behind the car, which reduces the wake size and hence the drag. 
A downside is that because the rear wheel houses flare out, high pressure zones are form on them, which is bad for drag. Slimming them down would reduce that. Moving up, this plane slices through the top wheelhouse vents because they look sweet. It also goes through the hood vents. The vents are pretty good. I mean, there's definitely flow coming out of them, but almost no wake forms. And that's surprising because the flow from inside the wheelhouses is much slower than the flow from outside the car. There's also low pressure here, which also helps suck out the flow from inside the wheelhouses too. And the rear wheelhouses are still pretty bad here. You can see how much unsteadiness comes off of them. And I know that they are styled like that because it's the Porsche design and also helps increase the width of the track, which might be good for handling purposes, but streamlining this area would help the rear of the car a lot. Look at how the flow behind the wheelhouses struggle to maintain speed. There is also a lot of low pressure coming off of them behind the arches that is going to come with a drag penalty. And these drag isosurfaces show that there is minimal drag from the hood vents. And part of that is because Porsche even added these little tiny guide vanes to direct the flow. Again, this is what all cars should be, aero devices everywhere. The front wheels are producing quite a lot of drag, which shows you just how hard it is to mitigate all the drag from them, because Porsche added so many devices, but we still get stuck with this red flow. Apart from that, only the rear is producing substantial drag, but it is a lot. And part of the reason why is because of how flared the rear wheel arches are. As a result, the drag option is quite high at 0.42, which is one of the worst on the list, but that's not the only thing to consider when it comes to the aerodynamics of a car. Sure, the drag is bad, but that's because so much downforce is produced, 136 kilos, which is like having a really fat chick in the passenger seat. At 72 kph, that's about 34 kilos of downforce, which is still the best on the board. So Porsche traded a little bit of drag for a lot of downforce. So keep your nose clean and peace out amigos.